Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-40. When last we listened, the group had escaped the reaches of Saydown City and moved across the water to within sight of the eastern province. Grish was still being mysterious about the mission, but promised to enlighten everyone upon landing on the other side. The group began to gather supplies as land showed on the horizon. We begin now as the group contemplates the outcome of their foraging. This isn't nearly enough for more than a few days of travel into the interior, proclaimed Yolanda Two Blades. The master bosun of the flying porpoise shook his head and explained that they were not in port long enough to completely restock. The group picked up two small burlap sacks and thanked the bosun for his help. After reaching the main deck, Grish stood waiting for them and pacing anxiously. His face showed despair as he noticed the meager supplies. Sir Omel waved his hand as he observed the large Zenobian speak. We'll just have to make do. This is all they could spare currently. The dejected cleric nodded his head and advised the group a longboat had been lowered and there was no dock in this region. Grish rode and sat deep in thought as the boat left the flying porpoise and made landfall in the eastern province. The group successfully beached their craft in some high ground and encircled the large cleric as he gathered the bags. Spill it, Grish. What the Hades are we doing here? complained Phidias the rogue. <sighs> Exhaling deeply, the cleric dropped the bags and told them of the past few days' information, including the report that King Mellet may be a usurper. Stunned, the group looked at each other and watched as Grish and Yolanda stared at each other. She raised her hands, showing she had nothing to say, and he nodded silently. Brother Stance thought for a moment and spoke. That is certainly quite a chain of events, but it doesn't explain why we are in this eastern province land. Yolanda explained that Pellet was said to have come from this region, and hopefully some form of truth could be discovered about his origin story. Grish explained that a swamp near the center of the province probably holds more information, but the trip could be arduous. The land on this side of Denali is extremely dangerous, with both the flora and fauna being quite aggressive to life as we know it. I would urge caution and avoid reckless behavior. Why are you looking at me? exclaimed Phidias, followed by a mutually wagging finger between the two of them. The Zenobian explained that the swamp was one or two days' ride from this location, but Harris quipped that they did not have any mounts. Flustered at the obvious, he hefted the bags and stated that they would walk until other arrangements could be made. After two hours of hiking across the grasslands, and what seemed like three hours of bitching from Phidias, the group paused to take some water when Harris commanded everyone to drop. Dipping below the top of the grasses, they wanted to know what the issue was. Harris took a quick peek and announced strange animals were ahead. Grish and Yolanda rose up from the concealed positions and spotted the creatures in questions. In hushed tones, Yolanda asked if they were seeing what she thought she was. Grish nodded and sunk back down below the grass to speak to everyone. Those are called Kanta and are basically large, flightless birds. Sir Omel, gripping his weapon, asked if they were aggressive. Grish and Yolanda both chuckled and nodded their heads negatively. Yolanda explained that the large creatures were far too stupid to be aggressive, and all they did was eat the tall grass of the plains. Grish confirmed and added that they were also useful for transportation. The group rose up as a whole and looked at them, and Phidias received an angry glance when he remarked they must be strong to be able to haul the hefty cleric around. The group opted to try and encircle the small herd and capture them when they felt a rumbling below their feet. The collection of Kanta must have also felt it as they immediately stopped grazing and began to look around. As the adventurers looked around, 
The ground between them and the herd animals began to rise slowly, as if a giant gopher was making its way toward the herbivores. Oh no, said Yolanda, with dread hanging on her words. Grish began to run towards the animals, swinging his weapon over his head. Yolanda, two blades, followed quickly behind him, with the rest still uncertain as to what was going on. The herd observed the two adventurers running towards them and scattered, except for one lone juvenile Kanta that was frozen in place. The cleric began to yell out, It's a Sabas! As Stance, Phidias, Omel, and Harris all brought up a distant rear as they observed Grish launch himself as the ground began to erupt and a leather-plated creature exited the ground and leapt at the young Kanta. Grish's impact knocked the burrowing creature to one side long enough for the herd animal to flee to the safety of its family. Angered at the loss of a meal, the leathery creature turned on Grish and clamped down on the cleric's arm, causing blood to flow freely. Yolanda arrived and vaulted over the creature's exposed neck, and as the leaf fighter twirled, she slashed twice into the creature, opening up deep wounds on its neck. Grish also countered with a smash to the triangular snout, resulting in the beast releasing its grip on the Zenobian's arm. The pair smacked at the Savas's head and body, but the thick leathery shielding of its skin caused the blows to bounce off. A pair of glowing missiles struck true as Harris fired off a spell. Omel and Stance joined the fray, but their blows also caused little, if any, damage. Phidias, a bit slower to the fight, observed the lack of damage and opted to slide between his associates and attack the creature from beneath. As the diminutive gnome glided between Grish and Yolanda, a loud NO escaped their lips. A pair of daggers raked the soft underbelly of the creature, pouring forth a green, slimy substance. The beast growled loudly and promptly fell on top of the rogue with a loud crunch. The eyes dimmed and both Yolanda and Grish tossed their weapons aside and attempted to lift the huge creature off their comrade. The others followed suit, and once the combined strength was given, they were able to lift the corpse of, off of Phidias and Harris moved to pull forth his friend. Yolanda yelled out, Don't touch the green! Causing the wizard to pause with concern. He examined the crushed Phidias and grabbed him by the boots and pulled him out into the open. The creature was dropped and the group gathered around their fallen associate who was twitching frantically. Yolanda and Grish quickly doused the rogue with their water skins washing away some green blood. Sir Omel, Knight of Bacchus, began to reach down for his comrade, but was pulled back by the cleric, who warned not to touch the twitching gnome. A pall came over the group as they watched their friend convulse and spit up foam from his mouth. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.